Hi, I'm Nathan Feuerberg, writer and creator of Flies in the Jar. If you enjoy the show, it would be great if you could go over to iTunes or Podchasers and leave a review. Or, even better, just tell a friend. Flies in the Jar is a serialized radio drama. If this is your first time listening, it's advisable that you begin with episode one. Previously on Flies in the Jar. It's a card game? A drinking game. How do you win? The person puking on the sidewalk in front of the bar is the winner. That's what I'm talking about. Two more shots. Driving through the dark, I heard it. My song, sung on the radio by another voice. Oh, that's how you found out for reals? Ladies and gentlemen, we will be arriving in approximately 10 minutes. The captain has turned on the fastened seatbelt sign, and we ask that everyone return to their seats. You really want to get rid of this person? Never see her again? Absolutely. Okay. Now tell him. I'll never see you again. I've got my foot on you! I'll never see you again! And now, an all-new episode of Flies in the Jar. Flies in the Jar is based on true events. Oh man, that was easy. I was expecting security to search us or something. Well, I guess we don't look that threatening. Oh look, there's a taxi right over there. Regarde-le, son ventre lui rentre à peine dans sa chemise. Laissez-moi vous aider avec vos sacs. Uh, yes, we are headed to the 18th. You're not even going to try to speak French? No worries, I speak a little American. See, he's like fluent. Okay, so we're headed to the Hotel des Perdus. Ouais, la rue de la Voyance. Come again? You are staying uh, on the street of uh, spirits. It is where they speak uh, to the dead. What kind of motel did you book us? Don't worry, it's like one of the top rated places in my guidebook. Did that come with your French tapes? It looks about as old. Hey, the hotel's in a good neighborhood, right? Ouais, ouais. My auntie uh, lives uh, near there. See, he says it's a nice area. It is a place uh, where the air is very thin. I don't follow what that, that means. How do you say? Uh, comment, comment, comment dire? Uh, vous pouvez glisser dans un autre monde. Dude, where the hell did you book us? It's gonna be fine, Zen. There's like a dope fried chicken place right next door. That was your criteria. Find a hotel near a chicken joint. It is a very good chicken. Best in the city. See, he knows what I'm talking about. Flies in the Jar. Starring Lady Zen, John Jeffers, Kent Evans, and Clara Dunham. Acting consultant, Martin James Grappengetter. Sound mastering by Joshua Holloway. Produced by Lady Zen. Written and created by Nathan Feuerberg. I can't believe you asked me to meet you in a bar. Hey, it's not just a bar. They sell fries here too, okay? Do you even remember our last date? Oh, Gerald told me that I passed out in front of O'Malley's. And that seems normal to you? No, I mean... I had to talk your friends into helping me carry you into a taxi. Ah, 
I was wondering how I got home that night. <sighs> it's not funny. When we got to your place, you dropped your keys and I had to search the front of the lawn because you were too drunk to find them. <laughs> Stop laughing. I mean, come on, that's a little funny. I can't be with someone who is trying to destroy himself. I can't see your face. You have to tell me what you're thinking. Um, it sounds like you're trying to break up with me. Every day of my life is a struggle. Just to do the simplest things, I have to make a plan. You have everything, but you've got no problem throwing it all away. Isn't there, like, some kind of surgery that they can do for you or something? Don't like try to change the subject. We're not talking about my disability. We're talking about you. Okay, fine. I'll go check out one of those meetings. I don't want you to go to some meeting because of me. You have to want it for yourself. No, I'm serious. Like, I'll do it right now. Let's go. What? They have a sobriety meeting at the chapel on the corner. If we go right now, we can catch the last half of the meeting. You're serious? Yeah, let's go. Okay. You know how you were asking if there was a surgery that could help me? Yeah. There is one they've been talking about. It's only for people like me who lost their sight after they were born. They basically inject bone marrow into your optic nerve. What? That's, that's great. How do you sign up? The FDA hasn't approved it yet. They might never approve it. You know what's crazy? Even if they do approve it, I don't think I'd go through with the surgery. What? What are you talking about? Why not? Everyone thinks being blind is a bad thing. But not seeing is a part of me. I'm not sure I'd want to change something that defines me. Do you want me to come in with you? No. No, I should probably do this myself. The thing they never tell you about crack is how good it feels. On the news, they act like it's a disease poor people catch. They never tell you, this stuff will blow your mind. This stuff will make you not care about your crappy job or your mortgage payments. This stuff will get you so high, you'll swear you're in heaven. Nobody forces you to be addicted to crack. You choose to smoke it because it's the only way to deal, but Eventually, the bank forecloses on that duplex you were worried about and your boss calls you into his office and says he's got to let you go and you find yourself working at a strip club and living in a hotel next to a hooker named Lexi. I, I guess I came here because I needed a way out. And, and I'm hoping these meetings might help me find it. Thank you for having the courage to speak to us. Rachel is not the only newcomer we have today. We also have a young man. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Jesus, but um, people call me by my last name, Sanchez. Uh, I guess I'm an alcoholic and a drug user. Would you like to come up to the podium and say something? Yeah, sure. The first time I tried marijuana was when I was 13. My friend's parents were out of town, so he invited some of us to his house for a sleepover. We did that trick where, you know, one friend says he's staying at Jack's, and Jack says he's staying at Freddy's, and, you know, so on. So anyhow, one of my friends, this dude, Jorge, he brings a dime bag of weed. And, you know, of course, we, like, all wanted to try it, but nobody has a pipe. So, before we, this was of course was before we knew that you could just make one out of a can or an apple. Um, I prefer the apple method personally, but that's just me. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, someone had the bright idea to go to 7-Eleven and buy rolling papers, like any of us even had a clue how to roll a joint. Uh, but the old geezer working the register wouldn't even sell us any. Um, we get back to the house and we'd pretty much given up on the whole idea. But our friend, the one who had invited us over, says, hey, my parents have a pipe. And we're all like, dude, what the hell? You could have told us that like hours ago. We've been like, you know, searching desperately. 
And he says, uh, well, listen, I don't think you guys are going to like it or want to use it. And we're like, bro, we'll be the judges of that. Just bring the pipe. So he goes up to his parents' room and he like rummages around for a little bit. And then he comes back down with the pipe. And he says, here you go. We all start laughing because the pipe, of course, is a penis and the bowl is the balls. And at first we were like, you know, a bunch of 13 year olds like, nah, bro, that's gay. Nobody's going to smoke from that thing. But after a while, somebody's like, yeah, I'm going to try it. And soon enough, we all look like a bunch of 13 year old dudes sucking some guy's dick to get high. Thank you so much for sharing. We have sobriety meetings right here every day at 2 p.m. I hope to see you all again soon. Oh, hey, hi. I loved your story. We should hang out sometime. Get sober together? Uh, sure. Yeah, why not? I'm about done with these bike lists cutting us off. Did you see what that dude did with the baguette? He like folded it in half and strapped it to his bike. Hey, how far is this record store anyways? I don't know, it's supposed to be right around the next corner, I guess. Do you see that? What? It's a movie poster. Yeah, but that's my movie. Mm -hmm. It's a pizza delivery guy with a double barrel shotgun and he's fighting a demon. It looks like every other bad action film ever made. Who is this Jean Perrier Junette? The nerve of this guy acting like he wrote my movie. Let's go. Elsa should be there any minute. Adi, 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 adi. Oh man, the line's like a hundred people deep. Come on. I'm good with the bouncers. Hey, 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 ça suffit là. Um, excuse me, sir. Je m'en fous de qui tu es. Si tu veux ton CD signé, tu te mets dans la queue comme tout le monde. Elsa, hold up. It's us, Lady Zan and Sanchez. What? You gonna act like you don't even know me? What the hell? She looked directly at me and didn't say a thing. I figured she'd deny stealing my music, but she acted like I wasn't even there. Well, lucky for you, I've got a tip on where she's staying, so my recommendation would be let's get a little latte and then we'll ambush her at the Maison des Elephants de Or. You can go. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait right here for her to come out. No, there's too many people here. So just think like you're one of her stupid fans or whatever. Dude, just go have some fun. Check out that big arch up the road. I'll catch up later. What? No, I'm not gonna leave you. Just go. This is between me and Elsa, and I don't even know why I brought you along. Oh, brought me? What? It was my idea to track her down. You would still be hostessing in that IHOP in Maine if it weren't for me. Dude, kick rocks. This is my deal. What are you talking about, dude? I'm a part of this too. You're a part of it? <laughs> Why? Because you miss the good old days? I'll tell you this much. Getting the gang back together isn't gonna change anything. Dude, I... What do you... T I don't miss my 20s. I barely got through them. It took me a long time to sober up. And being around people like you certainly didn't make it any easier. I'm just saying, 
This isn't a nostalgic trip for me. I'm trying to get paid here. I wrote those songs and I want my money. Okay, okay, well, if that were true, you would have hired a lawyer and you, you don't need to see Elsa to claim that you wrote the songs and that she owes you money. Look, I've got a reason to be here. But as far as I can tell, you're just here to fill your belly with those French pastries. Hmm. Okay, I'm fat, I'm pathetic. I replaced alcohol with stuff in my face, but every time I'd think about what happened, I'd want to drink a beer. But I couldn't have a beer, so I'd pop a donut hole, or I'd drink a 50-ounce Coke. Fuck. I, 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 I don't know. I guess I just wanted to get us all back together. I don't know. I don't know why. I've just... I've held on to the secret for so long, Zen. Don't even say it. We promise never to talk about it, even amongst ourselves. I know, but I can't get past the guilt. Shut up. If I could, if I could just let it out one time. Shut up. I don't want to hear another word. Look, go. I'll meet you back at the hotel. Lies in the Jar includes acting by John Jeffers, Kent Evans, Clara Dunham, Martin James Grappengetter, Lady Zen, Maya Jaye, Jocelyn Sunrise, Sebastian Steins, Pedro Gonzalez, and Nathan Feuerberg. Sound mastering by Joshua Holloway, produced by Lady Zen, written and created by Nathan Feuerberg. Flies in the Jar is made possible by a team of voice actors and sound designers who have volunteered their time. You can listen to us on podcast platforms such as Spotify, iTunes, SMA Podcast, Radio Tulum, Stitchers, and YouTube. If you'd like to support the show and get early access to episodes, go to deepdrag.com and join our Patreon.